You won't be joining the family trip because it's not fun when there are other people around. But hey, I might bring you a souvenir if I remember, said my mother-in-law cheerfully on the phone. I was supposed to go on the trip with my in-laws and husband, but I got left behind. Since we got married, my mother-in-law, who really loves her son, never misses a chance to make a sarcastic comment or nag me to stay home. This is becoming a problem. When I told her about it, my mother-in-law just laughed, almost like she was making fun of me. Is that a problem? Too bad for you. Consider it a punishment for not listening to my advice. And then she hung up, saying it's not my problem but yours, right? I'm Jessica, a 30-year-old working housewife. I handle household chores and work part-time at the local supermarket. I've been married to my husband, Mike, for three years now. We met while working at the same company, though in different departments. We used to chat a lot on the same floor even before we started dating. Our connection deepened during a year-end party at the office. Despite being in different departments, I ended up sitting next to Mike. Since we were already close, our conversation flowed naturally. Mike excused himself to the bathroom at one point, and I was left listening to the lively chatter of the group next to us. Suddenly, a tipsy boss from another department began bothering me, insisting I drink more. Feeling unsure about how to handle it, Mike returned from the bathroom just in time. He saw what was happening, calmly placed his hands on the boss's shoulders, and guided him away to another table. After a bit, Mike came back to our table alone and asked, That guy really can't handle his alcohol, can he? Are you okay? That moment made me see Mike in a new light, and I decided to confess my feelings first, which led to our relationship. Things went smoothly from there, and we got married three years ago. Even though we don't have kids yet, our married life is strong. But there's one issue bothering me. My mother-in-law, with whom we currently live. Mike and I reside in his parents' house. Initially, we lived in an apartment, but it got affected by a fire in the neighboring unit, and our place got flooded during the firefighting effort. Having no other option, we had to evacuate since the apartment was uninhabitable. Unsure of where to go during the repairs, Mike's mother suggested, Why don't you two stay at our place? Grateful for the offer, we decided to live with Mike's parents. The trouble began after we moved in. Though she occasionally made snide comments even before, I tolerated them due to her deep love for Mike. However, her nagging intensified after we started living together. For example, one weekend, it happened as I was enjoying a cup of coffee in the living room after finishing all the housework. My mother-in-law returned home and immediately started bustling around the house. Then she came up to me and said, Jessica, your cleaning is too sloppy. You need to spend more time on it and show some gratitude for your hardworking husband. As his wife, it's your duty to support him. I can't believe you can't even do this much. You're failing as a wife. I thought, here we go again. As these were almost daily comments, it seemed the only reason she allowed us to live together was to be with her son Mike again. And my presence as a wife was probably nothing more than an annoyance to her. Mike intervened, saying, Please don't be so hard on Jessica. Well, there is some truth to what you're saying. Even if she's working part-time, slacking off on housework isn't good. Mike often sided with his mother, and while it's okay to value his biological mother, I sometimes wished he would stand up for me, his wife. In truth, I never intended to neglect household chores. Even working four days a week, I always managed our family's chores, even if just for a short time. This commitment held true even when I wasn't feeling well. Contrastingly, my mother-in-law, despite being a housewife, enjoys herself outside almost every day. Since we started living together, I haven't witnessed her doing any household chores. However, given that we're residing in her house, I can't openly express my dissatisfaction. In this awkward situation, I simply kept my patience. Then one day, something unexpected occurred. Mike proposed that we go on a trip, just the two of us. How about a spa resort next month? The busy season is over, and I need to take some annual leave. If I'm going to relax, I thought it would be nice to go somewhere peaceful. A spa sounds fantastic. 
I haven't scheduled any work shifts for next month, so I can take time off. After discussing details, we decided on a two-day spa trip in the middle of the next month. Since we planned to go on a weekday, we anticipated a quiet and leisurely time. I was thrilled and couldn't contain my excitement. Whenever I had a moment, I gathered information about our destination. Just as we were considering booking our stay, my mother-in-law made an unexpected statement. Jessica, I heard you're going on a trip with Mike. Why didn't you tell me? Well, um, honestly, I was afraid you might insist on joining if you knew. But I couldn't say that. As I stumbled for words, my mother-in-law sighed in frustration. Then she voiced exactly what I feared. Next month is my husband's and my anniversary. I'd love to celebrate with a family trip. A luxurious hotel would be perfect. Like a child throwing a tantrum, my mother-in-law expressed her desire to go on the trip. Of course, I have no interest in going on a trip with my mother-in-law. But this time, Mike and Ida were considering going by ourselves. How about we plan to go together next time? I tried to be accommodating in my response, but my mother-in-law wouldn't relent, insisting it's not the same if it's not for our anniversary celebration. In my mind, I thought she should go with her husband for their anniversary celebration. Just as I was about to express that, Mike walked in from work. Mike, welcome home. I was just discussing the trip with Jessica. Oh, I can't wait. My mother-in-law, already excited, began sharing her wishes, and Mike seemed to be in agreement with her. I wondered who spilled the beans about the trip, and it probably was Mike the way things were unfolding. Catching my gaze, Mike appeared a bit uneasy. Mom is really looking forward to it, so let's postpone our trip for another time. It'll be even more enjoyable if we all go together. By the way Mike was talking, it seemed he had already decided we were all going on the trip. Then my father-in-law chimed in, saying, A vacation, huh? Sounds like fun. With that, it became impossible for me to decline the trip with the four of us. All right, next time it's just going to be the two of us. Promise. Reluctantly, I agreed, and Mike gave me a relieved look. I wasn't entirely satisfied, but there was nothing I could do about it at this point. At the very least, I decided I would take charge of choosing the sightseeing spots and local dishes we wanted to experience. So I assumed the responsibility of making all the hotel reservations and planning the sightseeing schedule. Since my mother-in-law dislikes handling such preparations, my suggestions were accepted without any issues. The day of the trip arrived, and I had packed everything, including clothes, the day before. The plan was to wake up an hour before departure, have a relaxed breakfast, and then leave the house. I awoke to the sound of my alarm clock and stretched out, realizing Mike, who should have been beside me, was absent. Assuming he might be up and preparing, I headed to the living room. However, he wasn't there, nor in the bathroom, kitchen, or by the front door. Even my mother-in-law and father-in-law were nowhere to be seen. Could it be? With a sinking feeling, I dialed Mike's cell phone, but the call didn't connect. Calling my mother-in-law's phone next, she answered promptly. Oh, Jessica dear, what's up? Mike can't answer right now. He's driving. Where are the three of you? I asked, and my mother-in-law responded casually. Isn't it obvious? We're on a family vacation. We can enjoy it with an outsider around, so you'll have to stay home. If we remember, we might even bring you a souvenir. I heard my mother-in-law's triumphant voice over the phone. Stay at home? That's going to be a problem. At my words, my mother-in-law laughed scornfully. Is that a problem? Poor you, just consider it punishment for not heeding my advice. With that, she abruptly hung up. I covered my face with both hands and shook my shoulders. Yet what escaped my mouth wasn't a sob but a hearty laugh. They better enjoy their journey. I'm sure they'll regret leaving me behind. The sound of my alarm clock woke me up and I stretched out, expecting to find Mike beside me. However, he was nowhere to be seen, thinking he might have already gotten up and started preparing. I made my way to the living room. To my surprise, Mike wasn't there, and he wasn't in the bathroom, kitchen, or by the front door either. Even my mother-in-law 
and father-in-law were mysteriously absent. A sinking feeling crept over me. I dialed Mike's cell phone, but the call didn't connect. Trying my mother-in-law's phone next, she answered promptly. Oh, Jessica dear, what's up? Mike can't answer right now. He's driving. Where are the three of you? I asked, and my mother-in-law responded nonchalantly. Isn't it obvious? We're on a family vacation. We can't enjoy it with an outsider around, so you'll have to stay home. If we remember, we might even bring you a souvenir. My mother-in-law's triumphant voice echoed over the phone. Stay at home? That's going to be a problem. I retorted, and she scoffed. Is that a problem? Poor you, just consider it punishment for not listening to my advice. With that, she abruptly hung up. I covered my face with both hands and shook my shoulders. But instead of tears, hearty laughter escaped my lips. They better enjoy their journey. I'm sure they'll regret leaving me behind. Swiftly, I accessed a hotel booking site and secured a reservation at a lavish hotel in the tourist spot scheduled for today. Additionally, I booked a table at a restaurant for a delightful solo dinner experience. After a quick attire change and applying makeup, I had breakfast, thinking, all right, time to have fun. Grabbing my luggage, I hopped on the train. Armed with researched tourist spots I longed to explore, I embarked on a solo trip with a clear goal in mind. It's a small tourist spot, so there's a chance I might encounter Mike and the in-laws, but I'm unfazed. After all, they're the ones at fault. As these thoughts crossed my mind, the train arrived at its destination. From here on, I would let go of concerns about my mother-in-law and Mike, focusing on relishing the experience to the fullest. With this mindset, I ventured into a charming boutique, savored tea in a trendy cafe, and interacted with the locals, thoroughly enjoying my solo adventure. As night fell, it was time to check in. The hotel I had chosen ranked among the top luxury establishments in the area. I felt the need for a drastic change to rejuvenate myself. Walking through the automatic hotel doors towards the check-in counter, a woman's loud voice caught my attention. Why can't we stay here? We're willing to pay. Upon closer inspection, I realized it was my mother-in-law causing the commotion. Naturally, they couldn't stay, as this wasn't the hotel I had booked for the four of us. Watching from a safe distance, I noticed Mike spotting me and exclaimed, Hey Jessica, what's going on? We couldn't stay at the hotel you had booked. So we had to find another hotel, and they're full. As he approached me aggressively, my mother-in-law did the same, her face turning beet red with anger. Well, that's to be expected. They won't hand over the keys unless the person who made the reservation is present. It's a security measure. I did warn you, didn't I? At this point, they finally seemed to grasp their foolishness, exchanging glances in utter disbelief. Just as they were about to cause more chaos, several hotel staff members rushed over. The sight of my mother-in-law being gently but firmly escorted out of the hotel was rather comical. Remember this, we will stay in a place far more luxurious than this hotel. Feeling somewhat relieved, I decided to proceed with my check-in, leaving my accommodation-less mother-in-law and Mike behind. After completing the check-in process, I was escorted to my room. With its immaculate decor and opulent interior, it felt like I was in a dream. After placing my luggage down, I opted to explore the hotel. After a leisurely stroll, I returned to the check-in lobby, where guests kept arriving. I settled on a sofa and lost myself in thought for a while. As I sat there, a pair of young women settled beside me, animatedly sharing their impressions of the hotel. Their conversation took an interesting turn. Hey, have you heard about the hotel near the station? There's a pretty spooky rumor going around. Supposedly, you can hear hallucinations in the second floor room and all your belongings get stolen. And not just that, there's even a case where someone died, and nobody knows who did it to this day. We're fortunate to be staying here, aren't we? Is that for real? But why hasn't anyone been arrested? You call the police in a situation like that, right? Well, there are rumors that the hotel staff are involved too. So creepy. What a chilling story. 
Glancing at the time, I realized it was nearly the hour for my dinner reservation. I swiftly got up and hurried to the restaurant. Ah, that was so satisfying. After relishing dinner, I returned to the hotel, took a relaxing bath, changed into my pajamas, and was watching TV when my smartphone notified me of an incoming call. Hello, we found a hotel we can stay in. It's super comfortable. Too bad you can't stay here with us. Well, we'll enjoy it twice as much for you, so no worries. It was my cheerful mother-in-law on the line. Ha, huh, is that so? You're fortunate to have found a place on such short notice. My response was nonchalant, prompting my mother-in-law to continue. Isn't it? It's quiet and easy to spend time because there are hardly any other guests. It's close to the tourist spot and is a beautiful hotel. I wonder why that is. That's when it dawned on me. Could it be the hotel near the station? That's right. What about it? I recalled the unsettling story I overheard in the hotel lobby before heading to dinner. I think you should run. While I didn't necessarily believe the rumor, there's often a grain of truth in these tales. However, my mother-in-law dismissed my comment with laughter. Are you jealous of us staying at a good place? Well then, be regretful. Bye. Once again, she unilaterally ended the call, and I had no desire to call her back. Having offered my advice and fulfilled my duty, I powered off my smartphone. I wanted to enjoy my relaxation time without any further interruptions. After that, I spent a leisurely evening and peacefully drifted into a comfortable sleep. The next day, after checking out of the hotel, I visited the tourist spots I missed the day before and returned home as the sun was setting. Light spilled from the windows of the house, indicating the return of the three of them. I'm home. I deliberately announced my return in my usual manner. Upon opening the door to the living room, all three started talking simultaneously. Though taken aback, I managed to calm them down. Then my mother-in-law began recounting the incident from the previous night. After the three had gone to sleep, there were wrestling sounds, and my mother-in-law reported hearing someone entering the room. Paralyzed by fear, she quietly stayed in bed as the intruder seemed to wander around the room for about ten minutes before departing silently. Relieved, my mother-in-law went back to sleep, only to wake up the next morning and discover that all their belongings, including wallets and smartphones, were gone. The only items left were the coin pouch and key holder that Mike had placed in his jacket's inside pocket. In a state of panic, they reported the incident to the hotel staff, only to be coldly told, please pay for the room at least, without any effort to involve the police. Faced with this dilemma, the distressed trio used the remaining coins in Mike's possession to make a call from a public phone to a nearby relative, seeking assistance. Fortunately, the relative arrived promptly, covering the hotel charges and ensuring their safe return home. While they mentioned intentions to report the incident to the police soon, their frustration turned towards me. If only you had earnestly warned us to leave, we wouldn't be in this mess. Exactly. You share some responsibility for this, Jessica. What do you plan to do about it? Yet, if my in-laws hadn't left me behind for their trip, this wouldn't have occurred in the first place. When I candidly expressed this sentiment, Mike erupted in anger. Shut up. You're just the wife. Don't get cheeky. We're getting a divorce. I can't put up with you anymore. I was too stunned to respond. Silently, I went to our bedroom, retrieved something from the cabinet, and returned to the living room to reveal it to Mike. Divorce. Fine by me. I don't need a husband who won't protect his mistreated wife. Mike's complexion turned pale. What I presented were the divorce papers prepared by a lawyer as I had been anticipating this day. Perhaps not expecting my agreement, Mike was flustered. Eh, no, maybe we should think about it a little more. However, my mother-in-law seized the opportunity to push Mike towards the divorce. You should just get rid of such a horrible wife. Your mom will find you someone new. Unable to resist his mother's influence, Mike eventually consented to the divorce. Well then, goodbye. Please enjoy your life with your beloved family. Ignoring Mike, who was breaking down, I left the house. 
Later, through my lawyer, I submitted the divorce papers, and the divorce was successfully finalized. Despite Mike's pitiful pleas for reconciliation, I steadfastly ignored them all. I'm going to protect Jessica from now on, he claimed. Unfortunately, it was too late. On the flip side, my mother-in-law, who had successfully rid herself of me, initially appeared to be in good spirits. However, her joy was short-lived. The news of the divorce and the end of their shared living arrangement spread throughout the neighborhood. The gossip monger is connected it to her mistreatment of me, unveiling her unpleasant character. People in the community began pointing fingers at her, and the prospect of finding a new wife for Mike seemed to lose its urgency. I returned to my hometown and secured a new job through a friend's recommendation. I've had my fill of marriage for now. It seems like I'll relish the freedom of being single for a while.